December 10th uh, agenda, please. Mm -hmm. Councillor Stewart is uh, second to uh, only one Smith here tonight. So I'll make it easier for me. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried, thank you. Adoption of tonight's uh, minutes, that the minutes of regular council meeting held November 26th, or oh, sorry, the previous one, be adopted. Thank you, Councillor Erickson, Councillor Smith, all those in favor? Opposed? Carried, thank you. Uh, delegations. Mrs. Croft, could you join me up front for a minute? Love to. <laughs> I finally get to the front of the, the top pile here. You finally do. First of all, uh, thank you very much for all your contributions to the community. Thank you. On behalf of the community, uh, I do appreciate it. Thank you very much. And uh, on, a, on a personal note, uh, Donna Crop was, uh, so I sat at the council table my first term <coughs> with Donna. Donna was uh, very uh, good at helping me get my feet wet, so to speak, on council. <laughs> Uh, she was my go-to for history when I, I would say, why did the previous council do this? Donna would say, this is the reason. It helped me to make some sense of some of the previous motions. I appreciate that. Also, we would be in budget meetings and Donna would say, do we really need this? And how much is it going to cost? And are you sure that's the best price you can get? So I always appreciated that about Donna. As well, Donna would always say to us, what you think about this decision for a minute, and what's it going to do to our seniors' population? How will this affect our seniors? Is this a good move for our seniors? So I will take that to this table as well, Donna. I learned a lot from you over the years that I worked with you, and I appreciate all you've done. And Donna's not going too far away. She's going to stay and help in the community by being on our variance board. So you may see her at meetings, or you see her out and about, she's still involved, and I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's wonderful. You have anything to say? I'd just like to say that it's been a privilege and an honor to serve our community and to help shape it and to recognize that there's a lot of people that um, have a lot of needs in our community that they don't have a voice. And I always felt that when I sat here, I was representing the whole community, not just my friends, but everyone in the community. And I thought it was important to recognize that, as um, our new mayor has stated, that when we do make budget uh, meetings and we talk about raising taxes, that we don't want to hurt the most vulnerable in our community that have contributed all their lives into our community to make it where it is today. So I just want to say um, blessings to all of you. Merry Christmas. I hope God blesses you and that you make really wonderful decisions in the years to come. Thank you, and it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. candidate and experienced one here but I've got a lot of information from Donna sitting here and Donna, I really appreciate the wisdom you gave me as a new counselor and inexperienced counselor and uh, told me to cool my jets a few times <laughs> and uh, the experience was and the time together I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. It's been my pleasure. Good luck and blessings to all of you. Thank you. And you don't need to stick around, Councilor. I know, I'm out of there. <laughs> <laughs> My husband's happy about that, so <laughs> thank you very much. Our next delegation is from Essendon Waters, Mr. Bruce Lowry, the National Resources Manager for our Western Division. Uh, please join us. Uh, good evening. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here again in front of the uh, council and mayor. Congratulations to uh, on behalf of Jets Water to the incoming mayor and the new council members. And also we want to uh, recognize and thank you for your public service. It's um, I put together a little presentation that I was provided in your package, I think, but it's going to be a little dry. It's some figures and facts here. We like to share information and you know, we're just kind of science-based on what we do. But maybe for tonight, I had a different approach. And if you have any questions on the information I provided, I'm happy to answer that. I left uh, Donna some cards here so you know how to get a hold of me. 
One of the things we've done this year, beginning this year, is uh, to put in a community newsletter. So this you found in the Hope Standard, is an insert in the Hope Standard. We also have extra copies these we're going to place around in businesses that might be interested in having them, or maybe the uh, Chamber of Commerce or the uh, Advantage Hope. There are areas where the public might be able to learn a little bit more about Nestle Water. But we'll be planning on producing these uh, at least once a year, maybe twice a year, depending on you know, how much information we have to share. So what we try to do in this uh, uh, inaugural edition here is just introduce ourselves. Although we've been here for 20 years, we want to introduce ourselves to the community a little bit better. And I have a section here where I talk about water stewardship, which is my role at the company as the natural resource manager. I've been involved in this uh, operation since we purchased from Aberfoyle back in 2000 or so, 1999-2000. So I've been managing our water resources. I'm very familiar with them, and um, I'm responsible. Okay, so for our water withdrawals and our water management, our sustainable uh, operations with water, I'm the person. And so I put my name on the bottom of here, my e email address. If people have questions, I want them to reach out to me. We have a lot of good information to share. We're proud of what we do with our water resource uh, management, our stewardship of the uh, province's water, and uh, we'd like to share that information at every possible opportunity. So this newsletter is a good way. We talk a little bit about our uh, involvement in the community and also some information about our employment practices and how you might uh, find a job at Nestle Water if you're interested. So that's a start on that. We did have our uh, fifth biennial open house. So every two years we have an open house where you open up our doors, which is not an easy thing for us to do because we're a very sanitary facility trying to bottle water, but so we don't offer tours routinely. But we can offer a VIP tour. So if there's incoming council and mayor, we'd like to have you up. And if you hadn't had a chance to look at our operations, we'd like to invite you in. I'd take some time myself to talk about how we uh, uh, manage water, how we withdraw water, and how we measure our, uh, our, uh, our, our operations there. Um, another way that we want to communicate, I mean, I can talk about all I want about how good a uh, job we do with managing water, uh, caring for the environment, but we've recently entered into a uh, third-party certification to the Alliance for Water Stewardship. Uh, this is kind of like an ISO certification. Our plants are ISO certified, but uh, the Alliance for Water Stewardship is a new third-party certification. It's explained a little bit here in our um, newsletter. Uh, this was founded by uh, various NGOs, the World Wildlife Fund, and uh, others. Um, it's an industry organization as well, but it sets a standard for water stewardship, and then if you conform with the standards, not a standard we wrote, but a standard that the uh, Lines for Water Stewardship wrote, um, then uh, you can receive certification. I'm happy to say that uh, last year we were certified at our Alliance for Water Stewardship. We were the first organization in Canada to be certified, so with Alliance for Water Stewardship, we were the uh, sixth facility within Nestle Waters to be uh, certified. And this organization is growing already. So it's in its infancy, but I expect that you'll see in a very short time uh, that uh, many more organizations and industries are um, joining into the Alliance for Water Stewardship as a uh, recognized third party certification. I think that's important. Uh, I had a prop here that I want to bring in. I'm not going to take up too much more of your time, but if I could grab this. Present this uh, poster here to the uh, District of Hope. Suitable for framing. It is framed, and so you could put this uh, maybe somewhere that's a place that could work in the uh, district offices. But this is, as if, and I include this in your packet, but this is a block diagram of the, what we call a Hope catchment as defined by the Alliance for Water Stewardship. And so it includes not only um, Nestle's operations, but the entire District of Hope, and down uh, the Fraser to the discharge of the wastewater treatment system. So what this is supposed to do is collect both the kind of hydrogeologic um, catchment, the, the, the natural topographic catchment, but also the cultural catchment, where water is used and how it's discharged in the environment. Um, this isn't meant to be a Nestle propaganda piece. There's a little bit of information here that we'd like to celebrate about our stewardship practices. But in all part, it's meant to educate the public as to where your water comes from and where your water goes and how it works its way through the cycle. So some good science on here. Precipitation and it talks about the Coquihalla River and how water recharges this system and how it's used. 
the District of Hope and Nestle combined are the two single largest users of water. But even that, you can see our tiny little uh, slices of pie over here on the right-hand side um, of the total water that's available. So what one would get from this uh, block diagram is that Hope has a tremendous resource in water. And that even though the district in, uh, is using water, and even though Nestle Water is a world-class bottling facility here, uh, we're just a minuscule amount of water that's available here in Hope. And I can show you a lot of graphs and, and, and data that show that what we do is sustainable and that it really has no impact. And I'm happy to share that information with you. So we're pleased to be in Hope. Hope is a great place for us to operate and to continue to operate for many years. So with that, I'd like to leave this with the, uh, with the district. I'm going to quit talking just for a second and uh, make myself available. If there's any questions now, I'm happy to have a conversation. Or if you'd like to talk at any time, we can I'll do this another time as well. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, Councilor Erickson has a question for you. Yes, sir. I might have two. So okay. number, one, <laughs> number one question is, <coughs> is do you see that in the, with the global warming that we've been hearing about, that the Coquihalla River is dropping over the years during July, August, September, and um, hampering your process, or you don't see that at all? I haven't seen that. We did have a very dry year in 2014, okay? And so the Coquihalla River is due by snowpack. And 2014-15 was the lowest snowpack on record in southeastern British Columbia. Certainly the Coquihalla saw that. Certainly the lowest flows on record uh, recorded through the uh, Canadian Geological Survey were recorded that year. So uh, it's low snowpack will translate almost directly into lower flows in the river. I don't have enough data in front of me to tell you what the trends are looking at and try to see what's going to happen to the Coquihalla River. But it, it is affected by snowpack. So you keep your eye on the snowpack. That's why when we look at our modeling, we look at the snow pillow up at the uh, Splism Snow Station, we look at these flows in the Coquihalla River. Maybe you've heard my presentation before, but the Coquihalla River directly recharges this little bit of aquifer here at home. And so um, even during low flows, there's water that leaks from the river up where it crosses a little bit of aquifer up above the, the fellow tunnels, and this provides a continuous supply of water. So more than the 70 inches of rain that we get here in, in uh, Hope, uh, probably 85% of the recharge the aquifer is coming through the exfiltration from the river. So yes, I'm, 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 I'm keeping my eye on that. Now, one of the things I've provided in the packet was a kind of a funny diagram there that showed the snowpack, the snowpack condition, the Coquihalla River flow. You saw that every year a high snowpack translates to a high flow of the river, lower snowpack to a lower flow of the river. So the third uh, item on that is a little triangle that represents a monitoring well that we have on our property. It's only used to measure water levels. No water is taken from it, just use water levels. And what you'll see is even during that 2014-15 very low snowpack, very low flows in the Coquihalla River, groundwater levels were very healthy uh, in the Hope Aquifer. And so I'm not saying that uh, you wouldn't have several years in a row and you wouldn't start to see some decline in water table in the aquifer. The aquifer stores a tremendous amount of water. It really has a buffer uh, effect here. Uh, so one last thing if I could. I know during drought times, the district and other districts and other municipalities declare uh, drought steps where people are going to walk their water lawn or to uh, wash their cars. And then people may wonder why is Nessie still bothering bottling water at that time? It's because the springs in Oxford during that 2014 15 didn't even realize there was a drought. Okay? They're that buffered from. So. Now, listen, we'll keep our finger on the pulse of patient. If we ever saw that we had to re reduce our withdrawals, we would do that. Okay? And instead of producing water here in Hope, uh, we'll produce water in Sacramento or Denver or wherever else we need it. My second question is, do you see in the near future, due to global warming, the demand for water is going to continue or get more? Are you going to increase bottling facilities here the demand gets um, greater? I believe the demand for bottled water will continue to grow, okay? It surpassed uh, uh, carbonated beverages and some other beverages in the last couple of years as a, as a number one bottled beverage. Uh, but the funny thing about beverages is, uh, People only drink so much, so uh, if they, you know, we, maybe now we're scavenging the bottled water, or the, uh, the carbonated beverages, but at some point we'll reach a saturation point where people can only drink so much. I do think it's a growing beverage. Our facilities here are kind of constrained there. We only have a, 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 a space to put in two bottling lines there. We've been using between 75 and 80 million gallons here for the last several years. I expect that to continue. So I think our operations here will, are stable. 
I will continue to be a viable operation. I don't see us growing this particular location uh, much beyond that. Thank you. Smith. Hi. Uh, your stewardship program is an awesome program for kids and educate way more education for what goes on in the water system than we had growing up when we lived here. So I think that's an excellent program. And also uh, Mrs. Kurt, who comes out periodically and I've met with her and she's done quite a few events with us with water, giving out to the public and that to give the presence of Nestle's to make it known and that and that's very much appreciated. You guys are very good for teaming up for different things in town. We appreciate that. Thank you, Councillor. I just met with Michelle Drummond out here in the hallway. Uh, we presented her with a poster like this as well. We've enjoyed a 10-year sponsorship and partnership with the Old Mountain Center. They are excellent educators. They've done a great job here, and we're just proud to be able to help them reach the number of students that they do. Thank you very much for coming. We, we do appreci appreciate you as a, as, a, as a business in town. A lot of corporate sponsorships over the years. I did meet your new president at the open house. Uh, he uh, assured me he, he would come out again a little later, maybe next year, when he gets a little more experience. But uh, he, he did enjoy his visit here. So thank you again for being a good corporate citizen. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Uh, our door is open at any time. If you have questions, people can reach me. Yeah, that Donna some cards here. I'm not hard to find. So uh, please uh, reach out if you have any questions. <laughs> John knows how to get If I can add, Bruce came out from Montana tonight and he's going back tonight. Oh, just for this. <laughs> well, it's just the way it is. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pleased to be here, really. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, and I want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, on the staff reports, Mr. Fornawaski. Technology still. Uh, yes, yeah, surely my colleague uh, Ms. Bellingham will speak to your, to the issue, but uh, you may recall the last council meeting there was an agenda package of nearly 300 pages, and when we look at over the history, certainly since uh, we've been here as far as producing uh, agenda items and, and uh, other items for council, uh, there's a lot of productivity time that's lost, a lot of paper that's eaten up, ultimately uh, quite a number of trees that are cut down and hydro and printer ink. So uh, there is a case to be made and I'll pass it off to my uh, colleague, Ms. Bellingham, to make a case uh, as per the report. I don't know that there's much more to add to this. <laughs> but um, certainly the staff time, paper, ink, um, the copy costs per page that we provide through the top here, um, I think it only makes sense and we're excited to hopefully go paperless so that we can all sort of take it together and go through our agenda packages on the tablet and we'll extend all of our council information through electronic means outside of confidential material. And instead of producing buyers for council information, we'll email that information out, it can be stored. So hopefully council's excited to wanna go down this road and we're looking to authorize up to $10,000 to be included in the 2019 to 2023 financial plan for the acquisition of tablets, software, keyboards, and cases for each member of council and senior director. Thank you, Ms. Ms. Bellingham. I entertain a motion, please, uh, council on this. Mm -hmm. uh, Councillor Stewart and uh, second by Councillor Smith. Any discussion? I just have one question. Yes. Um, so, <clears throat> as you know, I support paperless and have been paperless since I was elected. Um, I have a question, will there be coming forward or is there an existing policy on um, technology use for, for uh, staff and elected officials? Because all of a sudden now we have a, a different responsibility. And that'll be certainly something we'll have to look at and see if there's an existing one and buff it up to meet today's standards, for sure. Thank you, Councillor Erickson. So just to go along with what Donna's been saying, I just went through my last four years of council material. It's four boxes. Four boxes for the last four years of council. So that's a lot of paper, just for me. So I totally agree with this. Learning the procedure might be a challenge for an old guy. 
Thank you, Councilor Action. I think it's long overdue for this council to do this, so uh, I'm in favor of it as well. So call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. <coughs> There's no committee reports tonight for mayor and council reports. So let me start with that council election tonight, please. Sure. So my report's fairly short. I uh, had a meeting with the Pope and District Chamber of Commerce. I think their annual general meeting is this coming Wednesday. And uh, like every, like a lot of community-oriented um, uh, council, like chamber, chamber, chamber of commerce, membership is a real problem. People can actually go and help out with the chamber. They're, they're struggling with getting people to be on the board. So anybody that's really interested in helping in the community come to the meeting and see if they can be participants in the chamber of commerce. The Hope Ray Pairs, we had a meeting um, last week, and one of the discussions at the meeting that really went to some extent was the garbage distribution and uh, the recycle center, and the regional districts and the organics that are coming in. Um, one of the persons that was at the meeting said that the organics are already in effect up the canyon. They, they do organics already, and they were suggesting that she should, probably should be you know, a committee formed to actually work with this um, recycling and the garbage pickup in the district. Um, they they also said that there's a lady at the regional district named Stacy Barker. I think she's from regional district. That she would come and be willing to come anytime to speak to us and uh, help us through this uh, uh, waste management plan for our area. That was one of the things that we really. somebody uh, get a meeting going where we can discuss it and then bring it to council. That's all I have to say. <clears throat> Thank you, Councilor. And actually, it's, uh, tomorrow morning I'm attending my first meeting about garbage issues and waste and, and organics and the next steps. It's all part of my agenda tomorrow morning. So I'll report back when I get more information. Councilor Stewart. Is that one, thing, one more thing that they did say and they were, they were wondering if we could bring back the spring cleanup. Uh, I know it's, it's costly for the district, but years ago, I think it was chamber driven, years ago, Victor Smith, for the chamber driven. That was really a big asset to the district and cleaned up a lot of, I know it was fairly costly, but cleaned up a lot of local garbage and brown homes. They were saying that might be something that the district should be looking at Uh, thank you. My report's uh, short. So I attended the Golden Ager's Christmas dinner on the weekend, and it was well attended, uh, great food, good service, and just lots of good conversation. Um, and it was just a wonderful evening as usual. Also attended my second kick at the Shaping Our Future of Healthcare and Hope, and a different group of people, um, lots of great conversation. We talked about making the community inclusive as well as, you know, how can healthcare be more inclusive in our community? So it was interesting that way. Um, we also talked about um, how do we access healthcare? What are the different ways for different generations? Is it, um, is there a need for streamlining access and things like that? And also how do we communicate about our health needs and how do we get um, the services and hope that we need. So it's really good conversation. They're going to compile all of the data and then have a report out later on. Um, I also want to thank staff um, for the, the bench that was very quickly and beautifully placed in front of the walk-in clinic. Thank you very, very much. Um, and I want to wish everyone a very happy and safe holiday season. Merry Christmas, if that's how you believe, and happy holidays if that's not. Um, and yeah, from our family to yours, happy safe holiday.
Thank you, Councillor Stewart. Councillor Smith. Hi. In answer to the uh, garden when they had the uh, pickup and that, we did a trash to treasure, which was only a minor thing, but it did help getting stuff going to the landfill and stuff, and that, and that was part of the thing. Was the cost got so high because, of, like other things, people had abused the system. So, but you have to find out a solution to do that. Anyway, I attended the uh, uh, info, info center, had a, a get together, a social event, and they were doing some planning, and that was kind of a fun evening and that. So, everybody got to chit chat about next year, and they're all excited. You Grow Food celebrated the end of phase one of their plans. They're going to shift on to bigger and better things for Scott and Stephanie. Uh, about 80 people attended. It was, a, it was an excellent thing. The lights are out at exit 170, and uh, then I took a look, and I can see the lights. It's not, it doesn't look like it's uh, anything we can fix in that. The lights at 170 are actually highways. They're not the districts. So people I know follow the districts, but it's not the district. The chamber went out and put in new lights years ago when they were smashed, but it's not the district. So anyway, went to Anderson today, and Stefan has phoned the contractor to come take a look at it. I just want to give you a history so you realize it's not the district problem. Uh, the concrete, uh, the plant there for doing the uh, Wells and Up Valley helicopter, uh, after the meeting two weeks ago, they've already got the fence up and gated. It looks very nice. They're being very responsible. And I know that uh, uh, Councillor uh, Erickson there was out there too. The casing is going through under the road. It's progressing well. Those guys are happy because they hit a couple nuggets in there, which kind of slowed them down, but going through. Uh, Councillor Medlock and myself, uh, we serve on Community Futures Board. We're pleased to announce that our planning session is going to be held in Hope this year, January 25th and 26th. It's normally always held in Ashcroft, but uh, we've uh, got the board convinced to travel to different areas that the board represents so that we spread it around the area. Our area represent is from Hope to 70 Mile to Lilloweth to Savannah, so it's quite a large area. But the directors then will have a chance to host in their town, because that time of year we're all looking to try and get something coming to town and that. So we're kind of proud of uh, Scott and I for that. Uh, December the 8th was Ho Ho Day, Hope Day. It was well attended, good family. Lions Club did a great job out there, great community effort, stuff like that. The 12th uh, of December, we're having the Ugly Sweater Contest. Communities in Bloom with the Blue Moose across the street it seemed to be a Canadian thing. For some reason, ugly sweaters are really popular in Canada, no place else in the world. A lot of times it came from your grandmother. Uh, and also, uh, December 11th, which is tomorrow, we will do the contest with the Lions Club Community Some Bloom for the Lights, which will give the prizes for people that entered the light contest, which we appreciate. So. And uh, that's covered. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Uh, very quickly, for myself, I uh, attended the inaugural board meeting for the Fraser Valley Regional District, went to my new director's orientation. I also attended the Healthy Communities Primary Care presentation with Councillor Stewart. So we'll repeat all, all the things, but uh, it's well represented by our smaller communities from uh, Yale out to Sunshine Valley, all in between, all the different ways we can access health care and uh, suggestions on how to improve it. And I just wanted to also echo what Councillor Smith just said about the whole whole festival. Uh, thanks to Hope Towing, the Lions Club, Communities in Bloom, there was carolers, there was many volunteers out in the street. Uh, helping with the different programs. The Blue Moose had a concert where they raised $2,000 for the hospital auxiliary, the Heart and Stroke fundraiser dance, there was a Cal Tire pancake breakfast, stuffed the cruiser at the, all the grocery stores in town. Saturday was a very busy day in town, and lots of people supporting everything out there. It was really good. Uh, the last thing, I did get a few calls today about uh, why are we cutting trees down uh, along the, the uh, Thacker Mountain Regional Park Trail. The, uh, the colony of beavers there had been quite busy, and there was four major trees had to be brought down today, and they're going to start wiring some of the other trees starting tomorrow. So there was a safety issue with the four trees. Uh, they did uh, relocate two beavers early in the season, but there seems to be a bigger colony there than they thought, and they've been very busy. So that's why you heard the, uh, the chainsaws going the last couple of days. That's uh, the end of my report. Thank you. Moving on to permits and bylaws. Uh, report dated December the 11th, 2018, from the Director of Community Development. We the development variance permit for 65367 Cockle Lake Road, Crystal River Court. Uh, call for submissions or comments relevant to the development variance permit. Is there uh, 
Anything else the council should be aware of? Uh, we've received no submissions, Joe. No submissions, thank you. Um, Councillor Stewart. Unless there's people here this evening. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, okay, I'll, after Councillor Stewart, I'll go to call them. Okay, so I did receive quite a few phone calls regarding this particular issue, and um, the main concern brought to my attention was um, proximity to the marsh. And does the variance actually push the lane closer to um, to the marsh? Um, I honestly can't speak on that. I know that the area, it says we relax it as much as we can. We, he needs that area to be closer to the northern property line in order to maintain the existing through, uh, which is for the park. If they meet our setbacks, he will have problems getting to the sewer pump for the park. So that's why he's asking for the relaxation. So it's not, the pump still, sewer pump area is there. It's just, uh, he'd have to move the sewer pump or do something in order to meet the setbacks, which would be a uh, very difficult for them to do. If, if I can amplify, it, it is our buffer that's being relaxed, so it's not a, an environmental or riparian buffer that we're not empowered to relax. Okay. So as far as a direct threat potentially to the ecology of the marsh, uh, that's not really the issue as far as our buffer goes. Okay. Any questions from the audience tonight? Anything you want to add? All right, thank you. So the, the motion will be that council approve the issuance of a development variance permit in order to relax the mobile home park bylaw 6393 section 4.02, one buffer area provision from 4.6 meters, 15 feet, to 3 meters, 9.8 feet, in order to construct a new common building in the form of a shop for the property legally described as Lot 1, District Lot 5, Yale, Formerly Hope District Yale Division Plan KAP 84237, PID 027-116-522, 65367 Cockle Lake Road. Further, that the Director of Community Development be authorized to endorse the development variance permit document. Further, that for the purposes of Section 504 of the Local Government Act, substantially start shall mean the placement of the foundation for the common building shop as approved by the District of Hope. Welcome, Councillor Smith. Uh, I'll make a motion. Council, thank you. Motion from uh, Councillor Erickson, seconder. Oh, second. Second from Councillor Smith. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Next item, the District of Hope Zoning Amendment Bylaw number 1442 2018, the 444 Trans Canada Highway. That the District of Hope Zoning Bylaw, zone, excuse me, Zoning Amendment Bylaw number 1442 2018 be given third reading in order to rezone the property legally described as Lot 1, Section 16, TWP 5RGE 26 W6M also known as 444 Trans Canada Highway from Highway Commercial C2 to Commercial C5. I skipped that. It's, it's uh, proper to do that. We're good to go. We're good to go. Okay. And for any discussion with this council, we'll go with the make a motion. Move. Councillor Erickson, seconder. Councillor Vic Smith, discussion. I just want to say that I did hear the, the comments clearly from the public that there are concerns about um, the children and, and crossing the street and the traffic and, and that there are all of those concerns. Um, so I'm not taking this lightly. However, we have a need for, for more housing in our community and not just for young families, but we also have a need for um, senior citizens and we have a need for many people. Um, so I'm going to support this application because I believe that the densification is important and I trust that that um, they will do their due diligence and make sure that, that the concerns that were voiced tonight 
required to be students. So I do support this application. Thank you, Councillor Erickson. So I have uh, just a couple comments, and I talked to John earlier on. The issue came up that the park being kind of, but that's not the district of Holtz Park, right, John? It's not a district of park. No, no it's a, it's a, a it's crown, it's crown. It's crown land. So the district of Holtz has nothing to do with that park. It's not our responsibility. Just to make sure that they were saying that there was a park behind the yeah, yeah. issues. Okay, and um, as far as the quality of the building, that was another comment that was made by some people. The quality of the building, does the district of Hope in the building permit process um, <coughs> require certain qualities? Then just because people were commenting that it's going to be, who knows, maybe an eyesore, mm -hmm. but who does the quality, um, <coughs> charge the quality of the jurisdiction? Is that architect or engineer, architect or engineer. Yeah, but it goes through yeah, the building yeah. permit process. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. If, um, I just want to make it so it's public so people can. No, what would happen now if this property is rezoned, or even if it's not rezoned, even if it maintains a C2 zone, it's in a development permit area for, for form and character. That would come back to council for their review and acceptance. This is just a color rendering the applicant has supplied. It does not mean that that is what's going to be on the site. All they've asked to do is rezone it. They've actually asked to downzone it from C2, which is highway commercial, to C5 in order to allow business and professional offices on the bottom floor, which is not allowed in the C2 zone. Under both zones, you're still allowed the same maximum height <coughs> of 15 meters. So. Under the current zone, it's still 15 meters. Uh, we're not speaking on any variances here tonight. It's just simply to change the zone. And under the current zone and the proposed zone, you're allowed one or more dwelling units above the com commercial use. So as long as it doesn't exceed that 15 meter height, no variances would be, be asked for. So why I ask the question, because one of the comments tonight were saying that it could be a you know shabbier someone's going to build it and not look good i just want to make sure that we have that's what the development permit process with the building permit process has nothing to do with this that is correct you would council would be able to see what is actually proposed on the site once um, a development permit has been applied for which would be the next step and council would approve it or not thank you and, and in the in the motion that comes because it is in a form and character area, uh, you would normally empower the Director of Community Development some discretion there to enforce and make sure that it meets council intent. Thank you. Councillor Smith. Hi. Also, the OCP would fall into that before, too, right? From the plan, what we've got going on for yes, 18-2, two, which we've done that. Uh, and uh, Councillor Stuhlin here is right about the people's concern. I do see that, they, but I do see that they only have one three-bedroom in the place. And right now, there's a, a, a tremendous amount of seniors that have sold their place. They're living in Chilliwack, would love to live in Hope, you know, and that. So I, I would think that there'll be more people who are retirees living there, actually, than families, right. you know, because of, you know, because it's only most of our two-bedroom or one-bedroom, so. Anyone else in council? Any other question? No? All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. The next one, the uh, court dated December 10, 2018, from the Director of Community Development. I can read the non farm use application 20711 Bristol Slough Road OTG Developments. The council authorizes support for non farm use application to proceed to the Agricultural Land Commission in order to maintain the existing use and current facility for the storage and repair of resource development equipment on the property legally described as 20711 Bristol Slough Road. I'll make a motion. Yeah, uh, okay, well, Councillor Smith, okay? Yeah, and Councillor Harrison, second. Discussion? Councillor Smith. Uh, I grew up down there, so that, that road's been like that forever. Like, it's been a long, long time. So I think what's happened here is when Warren was down there to start with, then he came in for it, and it just kind of kept going on in that. 
So I, I'm sure without the debt construction bought it, they didn't realize that that had never followed through with it. It's a it's a great they're great contributing for the, for the town here. This and uh, that location's been like that since I believe 1948. No, I'm not mistaken. Your Worship, uh, you're right, this has been a long time <clears throat> existing as it is, and this is an exercise to bring it into compliance with the Agricultural Land Commission. Quite frankly, it's been a bit of an oversight really on their part. Um, however, um, from a staff perspective, it's generally a positive thing because we're not looking to lose any of the economic development that Mr. Dent presents at his location. Thank you, uh, Councilor Smith. Thank you. Do I speak again? And I haven't got it figured out yet either. There we go. So uh, call the motion. Uh, all those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Correspondence of the uh, accounts payable checklisting for November be received. Councillor Erickson and the second by Councillor Stewart. And discussion? Oh. So, um, through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so, John, can I? Um, I went through that check. I can't understand it. You, you went through this table? Yeah, I went through that table. I can't understand it because the dates are all uh, different dates. Some go back to 2007. And so how does, how does that work? Uh, Your Worship, uh, if it pleases you, uh, what I'll do is I'll have Dale uh, either prepare a guide or meet with you, Councillor Erickson, or any other councillors that want some clarity. Um, my, uh, my reading of it, when we look at the pay date, and Dale could tell you different, but that's basically when that item started. So for example, if we entered a contract, say with Telus in 2002, right, and then you move over to the right, it says the description and the invoice was October 2018. Well, that tells you that our contract with Telus started in 2002. We made a 2018 October payment related to that contract. Okay. So it's the same. But I, but I invite you. So the second, yeah, so second column is the current. The second, the second column uh, indicates, yeah, that ideally the start of, to my knowledge, the start of that engagement with that PE. However, again, I invite your particular question, and we'll make sure that you get uh, any detail you require, yeah. Councilor. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Question period from the public. Any items relevant to the agenda? Entertain those now. Anyone else like to come up? I actually don't have a question. I just have a comment. Go ahead. Does that work? Okay. Do I have to stand up? Or? Oh. I think you should. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. I hate public speaking. Um, so before the rumor mill comes uh, hurtling by, I you should hear it straight from me. I decided to take on uh, another role, so I'll be leaving Hope Standard at the end of the year. Um, but I just wanted to thank Mayor, Council, and the District for a uh, really great year. It's been a great learning experience, and uh, especially to Mr. John Portolowski. Uh, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes, uh, correspondence between you and I, and a lot of it is on deadline, <laughs> uh, mostly my fault. So I do. I really do appreciate that. It's been a great, um, a really great relationship, and I hope that uh, whoever takes on my role will continue doing the same thing. So, uh, and to the new mayor and council, best of luck over the next four years and beyond. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're going to be missed in the community. Um, you participated in several things, so I we do appreciate your time here. The next meeting will be January 14th at 7 p.m. At this time, we'll be going into uh, in-camera session, so the regular portion of the meeting is, is over at this time. <coughs>